Welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And today I thought it would be fun to experiment with making some paper. And I did make some a week or so ago and I was really happy with the results and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and do it on camera. So one day about a year ago, my husband and I were thrift shopping like we like to do and he happened to see this paper making kit and wondered if I wanted it and I said, sure, why not? So I thought, well, I should use it sometime and I had been kind of afraid to use it for a long time so I finally decided to give it a try but when we looked inside what we discovered was that it had um, part of the kit although it it was complete according to what the box said was inside but it only came with the screen part which is the mold it didn't come with the part that you lay on top which is the decal so my husband made some for me uh, to put on top to use that way and it comes with two sizes of frames it comes with that big one that I just showed you and also this smaller one so he made the decal for for both sizes and this is the size that we're going to use today so I'm going to set this aside now and I also have um, some shredder scraps right here that have been soaking and I'm just you know grabbing handfuls of shredder scraps out of my shredder and soaking them rather than um, tearing up pieces of paper into small pieces because why not let the shredder do it for me I also have a blender I have uh, some of these sheets of um, fabric it's just basically a bed sheet that I got at Value Village and I went ahead and surged the, the raw edges of it after I cut it up because I put it through the washing machine after my last um, paper making adventure and it just totally frayed the edges. So since I have a serger, I went ahead and finished off the edges so I could wash it without it doing that. If you don't have a serger and you want to cut up a bed sheet like I did, which by the way is 100% cotton, if you do have a sewing machine, you can uh, just do a zigzag stitch around it and if you don't have that well then just prepare be prepared to cut the whole thing apart when you pull it out of the dryer so these are the sheets that I'm going to use to lay the paper on and I have a big sponge and I have my uh, frame and decal and then I have this big thick towel that I'm going to use it's called couching when you put the um, paper on and then you sponge out the liquid. So I'm going to lay the paper, or the, the fabric right there. And I'm going to take the shredder scraps and I'm going to put them in the blender. And I've already got some water in the blender. And I'm just going to take a few handful of these scraps that have been soaking for a couple of days. And there, I guess there's no real set time on how long they have to soak, but soaking helps to break the fibers apart, break them down, make them softer and easier to blend into pulp. Okay, so now I just wanna blend it and I'm not using my regular food blender. We just picked this up at Walmart, but we do sometimes see them at, at uh, thrift stores. We just didn't happen to when I wanted one. So I'm gonna blend it until it turns to pulp. Okay, this is what it looks like when it turns to pulp. It has kind of the consistency of oatmeal. So the next step is to put some handfuls of that into, into this bin of water. And the way I have seen this done is that um, you strain it and it, this isn't necessary necessarily, but necessarily <laughs> but apparently it gives you a little bit more control about you know with how much you put into the vat there's a bin full of water so this is an optional step you can skip it if you want Just 
pouring it in the water and just mixing it up with my hands. You want to kind of suspend it as, you know, as evenly as possible. And you'll be able to tell when you um, lift the frame and decal out if, it's, if you have enough pulp in here. Okie doke. So now putting the, the, with the screen side up and then the uh, decal on top, I'm gonna smooth out my fabric here. You just put the, uh, the little, the frame and decal on the water and you want to lift straight out and let the water drain. And then carefully remove the decal. Oops, carefully. And then you turn it upside down onto your couching pad or your towel or whatever you have and sponge out as much of the excess water as you can with a big sponge. And then you lift the frame off like so and then what you're left with is a, what is going to be your first sheet of paper so we'll just go ahead and do another one and I like to kind of rock the frame and decal just to kind of help suspend and mix up the pulp and lift it straight up again. And lift it off. And this has kind of a weird texture, but it will flatten out when I turn it out onto the sheet. I made these sheets um, big enough to hold two pieces of paper or one big piece of paper. Oh, see what happened here? Where I dripped water on as I was taking off the frame. So all you have to do is just turn it upside down and just kind of tap it like that, like that in the water and then you can put a, uh, then you can make another one. It's pretty forgiving. This is a great way to recycle, repurpose, and reuse. Especially since a lot of waste management companies or areas don't let you recycle uh, shredder scraps. You have to put it in your um, yard waste and in the winter we don't have yard waste pickup so this is a better option and more fun okay so I'm just gonna lift this up now and put it on my drying rack and we'll let those dry and see how they turn out in the morning in the meantime I'm gonna continue doing this until I run out of pulp. So we'll see you in the morning. Bye. Okay, the moment of truth is here. But before we do a reveal of the ones that I just finished um, making the paper, I wanted to show you the results of the first and second batches that I did. This was the first one, and I really love the way they turned out. They're nice and white. Um, they're a little bit bumpy and a little bit thick, but that's kind of what I expect from handmade paper. Some are thicker than others, but all in all, I was super, super happy with this first, uh, with this first batch of paper that I made.
The second batch, I tried a couple of other things. Namely, I put some little confetti and some glitter um, in the in the vat, and that's okay, I guess. I also put a few seeds and some strands of thread. I don't. I just pulled thread out and just kind of sprinkled it in the vat without really thinking about it. But I don't really like how long they are, so I think if I were to do that again, I would definitely cut the strings or the thread in smaller pieces. And also some of the seeds just sort of flake off. You can just rub them off. And I'm not real excited about that. I was using poppy seeds uh, and, you know, it's, it's okay, I guess. Not something I think I would do again. You can see that in some of these. Some of them are really thin, which just means that I didn't have um, quite as much pulp in the water. Um, but all in all, I mean, I'll, I'll use them, probably not as pages in a journal, but um, like this one, <laughs> this one is really thin. This is like tissue paper, so I don't think I'll use this at all. Uh, but you know, some of them I will, some of them I'll probably use as embellishments or something like that. But one thing um, that I did gain, see here you can see some of the seeds just, just wiping right off. I am gaining experience and it's kind of like when Thomas Edison said um, about failure, he said he, he found 10,000 ways not to make a, a light bulb and so I'm finding a few ways not to make paper. Um, one, make sure that you have enough pulp in the in the water for it to really uh, pull a nice piece of paper and here's another really super thin one that just tore and I don't think I'm excited about using seeds I might uh, do a little bit more research into that prospect but what is nice though is that the paper does fold and um, I did a little bit of an experiment on another piece of paper that I made that you can write on it. Uh, what should I write? Here, let me just draw a little heart. So, you can totally write on it. The ink doesn't bleed or anything like that, and it works really well, and you can even uh, stamp on it. So let's try a little bit of that. The nice thing about using uh, scraps from the shredder is that, I mean, it's already, <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's not that big of a deal. It just costs a little bit of time and a learning experience. So it's, you know, you, it inks up real well. So I'm satisfied with that. Okay, so let's set these aside and see how this latest batch came out. And I don't have all the pieces here because there's a lot of it. But so to, um, and this is from the previous seeds here. So all you have to do to, to loosen it from the uh, fabric is just to run your finger under it and then just pull it off like that. And that one came out pretty good. It has a little bumpy right there. And it will take on the texture of whatever you lay it on. So even though this sheet is pretty smooth, um, it still has a little bit of a bumpy feel to it. And some of these bumps are because I had some stuff in the water, uh, like clumps, instead of having it mix, having the pole ball mixed up. Okay, so that one came out okay. happy with that one. So far the ones that I like the best are the ones that I didn't add anything into the water besides the pulp. Here's some, uh, this is from the printer paper or the, you know, the shredded paper. Can you see that? Where it has some flecks of different colors of paper and I like that. This one's tearing a little bit down here in the corner, and I think it's because this piece is a little bit on the thin side. Oh, also, uh, you can really see it right here. One thing that I noticed, can you see that little bit of that shininess right there? That is plastic. 
and there was a lot of plastic in this batch and I think it was because um, I may have or obviously did shred a window envelope at some point so that's one thing I will caution against is that if plastic won't pulp up at all and so if you're planning on using your shredder scraps to make paper which is a great resource make sure that you don't um, shred any window envelopes in with the rest of the paper or staples or you know anything like that be a little bit more selective about that and you know you can use your window envelopes in different ways to make you know to use in your junk journals I really like this one this one has a lot of different colors in there see if I can you can see that there's some color there and some color here and that's just a function of you know the the colors of the papers that went into the vat of water so I'm pretty happy about these and um, the rest of the um, the ones that were hanging up look pretty similar although I haven't taken them off the fabric yet but I think that the the results will be pretty similar to this right here so I'm getting quite a little stack of these and I my plan is to make some uh, little mini journals out of them for a special group of friends that are going to be attending a special class later on in um, August so I'll be working on those and if you like you can come along and join me while I do that so thanks for joining me paper making is a lot of fun and a lot of trial and error but that's okay because it's after all it's just shredded paper and I'm really looking forward to when the weather gets warmer and I can do it outside and use my clothesline and get more more paper that way so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll give paper making a try and if you do, leave me a note in the comments, or if you have questions, leave me a note in the comments. And I'm going to leave a link to um, the one of the greatest videos that I've seen. She does a series of them. Her name is um, Lisa, I believe, and her YouTube channel is Nevermind Paper. So I'll leave a link to her channel. And she has a lot of good tips, too. So thanks for joining me in this little venture. It's been fun, and I'll be continuing to do more. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. If you did like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Always let the serendipity find you, and happy crafting. And I'll catch you in my next video. Bye-bye.